join kids hat family Is everything fine Tofu? No. How can everything be fine? We were in the gym class when Josh and his friends came to me and started making fun of me. They made fun of you? Why? Because they all are taller and faster than me. Well, they should be. They're much older to you, Tofu. Everybody knows that, but it was so embarrassing, Tia. What are you going to do now? What can I do? Hmm. Well, let's get your mind off this nonsense. I read something interesting in school today. Should I tell you? Hmm. I guess. One day, a horse saw a snail in the meadow. Look at you. You are so slow. Hmm. The snail did not like the way the horse spoke to him. but he decided to ignore his mean comments but the horse went on and on where are you going and when do you think you'll reach there i don't understand why you need to make fun of me all the time well look at yourself it takes you so long to get from one place to another i would run miles in that time I suggest we both get on with our business and day. You know, I have an idea. Let's race. The snail thought about it for a moment. He had a plan. <coughs> okay, sure. Let's do that. How about this Sunday morning? Okay. We will race this Sunday. After the horse had left, the snail gathered all the other snails and told them what had happened. He also told them his plans. Everybody agreed and when Sunday came, They met very early in the morning. Okay everyone, spread out from the starting point of the race till the ending point. Everyone hide all along the race track. And so the snails spread out. When it was time for the race, the horse arrived. Soon the race started. The horse took off striding. After a while, he looked down and he was surprised to see the snail right in front of him. How did you get here? I must run faster. 
and so the horse started running. After some time he looked down and yet again saw a snail ahead of him. How is this possible? How can you be ahead of me? I will run even faster. The horse started running even faster. When he looked down again after some time, he saw the snail there again. This is impossible. I will run the fastest I can. Now the horse took off as fast as he could. As he neared the finishing line, he looked down, but he saw a snail crossing the finishing line. Tired and humbled, the horse gave up. I am so sorry. I underestimated you and made fun of you. Please forgive me for my arrogance. All the snails who had hidden along the race course and fooled the horse into believing that they were the same snail that he was racing heard this and laughed quietly from their hiding spots. What a wonderful story, Tia! Isn't it? I loved it too. And you know what, Tia? I know what to do about Josh and his friends. I'm feeling so much better. Oh really? What will you do? I won't get into a fight or get upset by what they say. I will just use my brains instead of muscles. Well, that sounds like a good idea to me, Tofu. Thanks, Tia. I'm going to my friend's house to make a plan. Bye. Bye, Tofu. Tofu, who was that? That is Lily. She is my new friend. She has an aquarium in her house and her brother has the latest robots collection and I want to see it. So I told her that I love fish and she invited me home to play with her. Since when do you like fish, Tofu? I don't. They creep me out. I just said it to her so that she would be friends with me and let me see her brother's robot collection. You're the donkey with the lion skin. What kind of donkey is that, dear? The donkey in the lion skin. One day, a donkey found a lion skin. Oh, look at that! It's the lion skin. Let me put it on.
he put it on and looked at his reflection in the river. Wow! I look just like a lion. No one can say that it is me. I must take advantage of this. The donkey wore the skin and marched into the village. Obviously, seeing a lion in the village, the villagers got scared and started running helter-skelter. They left their stores and kiosks open. The women dropped baskets full of hay and fruits on the road, grabbed their children and locked themselves indoors. This is so much fun! The villagers have left their food and belongings out here in the open for me to feast on. The donkey ate as much as he wanted to. grabbed his loot and went back into the jungle. For the next few days, he relaxed and enjoyed what he had brought from the village. When his supply ran out, wearing the lion skin, he walked into the village once again. The villagers once again ran at the sight of the lion. The donkey gathered his loot. This went on for many days. Every time he was successful, the donkey's confidence grew. We must do something about this lion. What can we do? Let us follow him and see where he goes. And so the villagers decided to follow what they thought was the lion. The donkey was particularly happy that day after plundering the village. Still wearing the lion skin, he went straight to the wheat fields and started singing loudly. The villagers who were behind him recognized his brain. It is not a lion. It is a donkey, braying in a lion's skin. I say we teach him a lesson. The villagers caught hold of the donkey and beat him mercilessly. So you see, Tofu, it is not enough to pretend to be what you are. One must genuinely be what they say they are.
otherwise their true nature will start showing and people will recognize their lie i agree with you tia i will go and tell lily the truth Did you take my school project? Yes, Tofu. I took it to school with me. How can you, Tia? I worked on that project for 6 weeks. I used all my pocket money to get the supplies for it. It wasn't yours to take. Tofu, can you please calm down? There is a reason that I took it. What could be a good reason to steal my project? Before I tell you that, I need to tell you something else. The other side of the wall. Once upon a time, a girl loved gardening. She had many beautiful flowering plants in her garden. One day she went to the market and met a lady selling seeds. These are seeds of a beautiful flowering creeper plant. If you want to plant it near a wall, it will take a support of the wall and grow. Take these. Your garden will become even more beautiful. The girl bought the seeds and merrily came home. She planted them by the back wall of her garden. It was a wall that she shared with her neighbor. Her neighbor couldn't walk, but they would often talk to each other from behind this wall. I have planted seeds of a lovely new plant. Oh, that's nice. I wish I could someday come and see a beautiful garden. But alas, I cannot move. My own garden has become a dry patch of land as I cannot take care of it. Many months passed and the girl tended to her new creeper plant every day. And with each day, the plant became bigger and bigger, but it didn't flower. Not a single flower grew on it. Frustrated by the only plant that did not give her flowers, she decided to cut it down. She brought her axe and was about to chop the creeper down. Just then, her neighbor called out, "Is that you? I have been meaning to talk to you for many weeks. Thank you so much for the lovely flowers." "Flowers?" "Yes. They are beautiful. I feel so happy every time I see them." The girl rushed to the neighbor's house. She saw that the creeper from her garden had pushed through the cracks and holes in her wall and was growing on her neighbor's side of the wall, and it was full of the most beautiful flowers she had ever seen in her life. You didn't submit the project as your own, did you, Tia? You took it for a good cause. Yes. I am glad that you have understood that. I took it because the house on your project kept falling apart. I took it to the carpentry lab and got it fixed. I will get it back tomorrow. Oh dear, you are so nice and I was so horrible to you. I am sorry. It's okay, Tofu. Just remember that things may not always be what they seem like. Today our teacher spoke to us about putting others first before our own needs. That's very nice. Tell me something, Tia. 
even if it makes them unhappy do people put others before their own needs some people who have a really nice heart do i remember the story of the happy prince do you want to hear it tofu yes Once upon a time a beautiful golden statue of the most beautiful smiling prince stood in the town center It was covered with gold leaves and had eyes made of blue sapphire It had a huge red ruby on the hilt of its sword Everyone who ever saw the happy prince fell in love with it. The baker whose flour had just fallen on the floor saw it. And said, "Oh happy prince, I wish I could always be happy like him. From now on I will." The school girl whose mother wouldn't buy her ice cream saw the happy prince and said, "Oh, the happy prince. I wish I could always be like him. From now on, I will." At the same time, in the forest near the city, a swallow asked his new bride, "My love, All our friends have left for Egypt for the winters. There they will see the pharaoh's palace and bask in the sun in the royal gardens. They will enjoy many fruits and berries of different kinds. We must join them there. But his bride just nodded her head to say no. We will come back after the winters. You must let go of your attachment with this home and dwelling. Bride again not snow. You are being foolish my new bride, but I must go. My friends wait for me. And so the swallow flies away. After a whole day of flying, he is halfway through the happy princess city and then begins to feel tired. I think I will rest the night here. and start again for Egypt tomorrow This golden statue is very beautiful I will rest between his feet Just as the swallow was about to sleep a large drop of water fell on him What Where did this come from The sky is clear. Just as the swallow was getting ready to sleep again, another large drop of water fell on him. When he looked up, he saw that the prince was crying. Who are you? I am the happy prince. Why are you crying then? I lived in the city palace once. I was always happy. I had no reason to be sad because I knew my people were happy too. When I died, they made a golden statue of me and put me here. From here, I can see the sadness of my people and my heart, though it's made of lead, feels sad. What do you see, a golden prince? Far away, I can see a seamstress. Her fingers are red and bloody from endless stitching. Next to her on a bed is a little boy. He is sick with fever and is crying out for oranges. 
but the seamstress doesn't have anything other than river water to give him. Oh Swallow, take the ruby from my sword and give it to her. No, no, I have to go to Egypt. I cannot stay. And if I go to the seamstress's house, I won't be able to reach Egypt. Please Swallow, the child is very thirsty. Hmm, well, okay, I will go. So the swallow took the ruby from the hilt of the prince's sword and flew to the seamstress's house. By the time he got there, the tired seamstress had fallen asleep on her working table. So the swallow kept the ruby on the table. Then he flew around the sick boy's bed, flapping his wings. Ah, uh, I feel so much cooler. I think I must be getting better. By the time the swallow returned, it was the next night. I will now go to Egypt. But the prince was crying again. I can see a hard working man filled with despair. He is a writer and must finish his next play soon. But he's tired because he has no food to eat. Won't you stay another night and help that man? Okay, one night it is. Should I take another ruby to him? Alas, I have no ruby to give him now. But my eyes are made of sapphire. Take one of my eyes. No, no, I cannot do that. But I order you to do so. And so the swallow plucked out the prince's eye and flew away to the rider's house. By the time he reached there, the rider had fainted out of hunger and cold. The kind swallow put the sapphire on the rider's desk and collected dry twigs and lit a fire for the writer before he flew back to the prince. When he returned to the prince, it was the next night again. And once again, the prince was tearful. What is wrong, Prince? In the square, I can see a match girl crying. All her matches have fallen into the gutter and got spoiled. No one will buy them now. She is afraid her father will be angry when she goes home without any money. Please, Swallow, take my other eye and give it to her. No, no, I cannot do that. You will become blind. But I order you to do so. And so the swallow plucked out the prince's other eye and took it to the little girl. The girl became very happy when she saw the stone and went home skipping. The swallow returned to the prince. Now you can go to Egypt, my friend. No, now I cannot go, my friend. I will stay here and become your eyes. So the swallow stayed by the prince. Every day he would fly over the city 
and tell the prince the sorry tales he saw. The prince would then tell the swallow to pluck out a gold leaf from his body and give it to the poor people of his city. Soon there were no leaves left on the body of the prince. All that was left was his cold grey body. It kept getting colder as the winters kept setting in and the weather kept getting chillier. The swallow knew that he will not survive the season much longer. My friend, it is time for me to go. Finally, you are going to Egypt. Not Egypt, but towards death. Isn't it like sleep after all? But before I go, can I kiss you? I will once again be sad without you. Kiss me before you go. And so the frail swallow kissed the prince and fell at his feet dead. Suddenly there was a loud sound like a crack. It was the sound of breaking of the prince's lead heart. In the morning, the mayor of the city crossed the statue. What an ugly statue! And it has a dead bird at its feet too. Break it down immediately and put up my statue instead. A few hours later, when the mayor's men broke the statue apart, they found the two pieces of the prince's heart and they threw it into the bin next to the dead swallow. That's when God said to his angels, Bring me the most precious two things in the world. And they took the dead swallow and the prince's broken heart to God. Well chosen, my angels. From now on, the swallow will sing in my heaven. And the prince will praise my ways. So you see, Tofu? Even if you forego some happiness by putting others before you, there are always better things waiting for you. Yes, dear. Now I understand what my teacher was talking about. Dia, I am going to the fest later tonight. Later tonight? It's not safe to go alone, Tofu. And I won't be going because I have an exam tomorrow. So you won't be able to go either. But Jack said it's safe. And Joe and Jim, everyone is going. Who told him? Some older boys. We don't know them. They were visiting from another city. That's not the correct way to do things, Tofu. You have to double check some things for yourself at times. And be careful with whom you trust. Do you know what happened to Chicken Little and his friends? What happened to them? Chicken Little Chicken Little liked to walk in the woods. One day, as she was walking in the forest and looking at the flowers and the trees, 
an acorn fell from a tree on the top of her head. Oh no! The sky is falling! I must run and tell the lion about it immediately. And so Chicken Little began running. On the way, she met the Henny Penny, the hen. Where are you running to? Is everything okay? Oh no, Henny Penny! The sky is falling and I'm going to the lion to tell him about it. How do you know that? It fell on my head and hit me. That's terrible. Come, I'll go with you too. We must hurry and tell the lion about this. Chicken Little and Henny Penny started running. As they were heading to the lions, they met Ducky Lucky. Wait guys, wait! Where are you going in such a hurry? The sky is falling. It fell on Chicken Little's head. We are going to the lion to tell him about it. Let me also come with you. Come, come! As the three of them were running, they met Foxy Loxy. Where are you guys going? The sky is falling. It fell on Chicken Little's head. And we've decided to go to tell the lion about it. Yes, yes. The lion must be told about this. But do you know where he lives? The fox had pointed out this problem correctly. None of them knew where the lion lived. I know where he lives. Come with me and I will show you the way. Happy to have found help, the three of them agreed. The fox took them to his own den and told them to wait at its entrance as he went inside. Wait here. Let me go talk to the lion first. When he is ready to meet you, he will call you all inside. After a while, Foxy Loxy called from inside. Come in, friends. Chicken Little, Henny Penny, Ducky Lucky went inside but never came out again. So you see, Tofu, you should always exercise caution before you go following things blindly. Yes, Tia. Now I have understood the importance of trusting the right people and not believing things blindly. Tonight, I am going to stay home and will tell my friends to do the same too. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.